Hello everyone, this is Dion Soul. How you guys doing? It's been a long time. Been uh, busy with real world issues and have not had an opportunity to be doing some uh, videos or streaming for that matter. So, what I thought I would do is, is do just that. Is do a little bit of streaming action. And what we got going on today is we are in, we as in you along with me, we are in this very nice uh, Carinado product, which Carinado's always products always look good, and everybody's had that attitude of like they're they're more uh, they're more pretty than they are substance. But this one right here is, is just fine. Um, this right here is the um, is the the uh, Striker uh, Strike Commander S, and uh, actually the same aircraft that. Uh, uh, Bob Hoover used in his air shows back in the day and I've got the uh, Solus Wings uh, colors which you see here uh, yesterday I bought the aircraft and then I spent uh, about six hours in painting the aircraft I don't know if I'm gonna hold to the to the to the red nose red nose reindeer here I don't know if I'm gonna hang on to that or not but I don't know it's it does kind of match with the the the, the bonnet uh, going around the uh, the windows and uh, that sort of thing uh, sporting my uh, November 502 Delta Mike, which is basically my birth date and month, and my my name, which is kind of fitting. I'm making all my aircraft that way. Uh, it's a very nice aircraft. I really like it. Uh, I decided I'd kick it old school and go back to the 1940s, uh, early 50s, uh, with uh, good old-fashioned uh, gas engines. I haven't done that in a while, and I just wanted that different sound, that different uh, feel of an airplane. And so, uh, so yeah, so I decided to do that, and it's it's really not a bad airplane. I mean, it's low, it's slow, and that's what I really want. I think that's what I needed for myself uh, for flying, as I needed. Uh, like I've said to other in other videos, uh, th flying for me is therapy. It uh, takes my mind off of the world, and uh, I'm sure people who watch this probably some of you will feel the same way. It just takes my mind off the real world stuff, and it's just like you know what. I'm just going to go fly. I can't, can't afford to do it for real, so the next best thing is to do it in the uh, virtual skies and at least get some sense of, uh, of you know, a flight. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, jump back into the airplane. Uh, as you can tell, it's definitely old school. They, they did put the Garmin 530 in it, and, uh, and it, you know, because it's old school, they, they did a good job in roughing up the edges, you know, losing paint and whatnot, and, and that sort of thing, which is kind of cool. Uh, typical car in adult fashion with quality. Um, it's, it's, as far as prettiness is concerned, it really looks really pretty. They, it does, everything does really well as far as the, the looks and stuff. Flight model is very nice. Um, you'll see when we get in the air here, it's very easy to fly, and it's something I want because I've been struggling uh, with my other aircraft, uh, with my uh, vertical uh, landing, uh, you know, I mean, doing 300 feet per minute and landing and things like that, which is not what you want. And I'm just, I think it's because I'm getting too patient and that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, it's its pretty nice. Uh, it, they did a good job. Uh, you know, you'd think you'd open the door there and you think, uh, <laughs> you click it right here. But instead you open the door. But anyway, so what you go is you go up here. And it, probably that's the reason why they did it. It's because they figured that if you click right here, you actually click right here and open the door. So the window's kind of cool. I like the window. But it makes it so I can't see out this window because you got this bar in the way. Which is, you know, it's, that's, that's a minor thing. It's just annoying. I did discover last night that this thing does have a... It doesn't pop it out here and show you, which I wish they kind of would have. But if you go down, you see the down arrow with the battery. You hit the down arrow. And then now you are... Uh, in uh, GPU mode, which is kind of cool. I, these, these airplanes, I don't recall ever having a connector for a GPU, so we're just going to have to stretch our little imagination a little bit and uh, say that this was retrofitted with a uh, with a GPU. I wish again, and I've been I've been a broken record on this on this idea, but uh, I just wish that. Uh, you know these aircraft developers for X plane uh, Carinado is basically this, and we can go ahead and close this, get rid of that. We don't need that. Um, I wish they would uh, make have the ability to ha kick it old school like it is right now, make it like the airplane that they're modeling, but then turn around and add some modern avionics. Uh, if you Google search the uh, 
the the arrow commander strike s commander strike at striker commander you'll find that a lot of flyers will put in uh, garmin um 650s 750s you know they they do all kinds of stuff and uh i've never seen them in a garmin 1000 in here or anything like that which heaven forbid Coronado put a garmin 1000 in his airplane i'd, I'd be crawling the walls and i have had gotten talk about videos about that how the issues with the garmin 1000 but uh putting a 650 and stuff would have been nice but having the the garmin uh 430 x plane stock uh is 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 just fine i can least input which we will do here in a minute uh we got about 50 gallons of fuel 45 gallons of fuel roughly 50 maybe 55 gallons of fuel or whatever because we're not going that far we're going to henderson nevada which i guess i might as well go ahead and do that right now go over here we're going to henderson nevada and um just taking off kwjf is zipping right on around here um i'll zoom in a little bit here uh, pick up ether and then get on the vor or the the virtual virtual airways and then hit uh basil go right past doggett and uh we'll hit the doggett vor right there sneak on uh, sneak on uh, v5 587 then to v21 slash 283 and just kind of rock and roll all the way up and then hit vegas and then get off at henderson right there henderson nevada so it should be an uneventful flight um you know it shouldn't be any problems there it is a sunrise flight sun's already up a little bit as you can tell but uh that's okay um you know i i, I just want to fly a uh an old school airplane and uh, this seems to be fitting the pill pretty good so what we need to do is we are currently with gpu going so the first thing i need to do is turn on my avionics general wmj and fox airfield okay we'll find out the data so we already got that turned on it's runway six and it's 2980 Wind 230 at five visibility more than 10. sky clear 2988 temperature 18 dew point zero altimeter 2988 2988 arriving runway zero right. six departing runway zero six advise on initial con all right well we got that taken care of so that's out of the way um uh, this aircraft the way it's designed uh you cannot tune your um your 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 uh, uh, altitude uh it's they don't have it doesn't facilitate tuning the altitude so basically what you do is you set your pitch but you're going to go on your pitch, and then you just climb up to the altitude you want, and then you just hit the altitude hold button, and that's how this airplane is set up. And uh, which is kind of cool. This doesn't have a test function; doesn't work, I guess. So, uh, in effect, you turn, you have it off, but you do, you do, in effect, turn it on right here. The roll, the roll ends up being your uh, controlling of your uh, your autopilot. It just basically, you turn the roll on, it just keeps you straight and level, which is kind of cool. I don't know if that switch even works, by the way. I haven't seen anything change there, but that's okay. Um, right here, you got your test. Test of your lights. And I don't... See, it, you turn it on. Uh, well, let me go back to bright. There, there's bright. You got your... I'm going to see if I, when I turn that AC off, see if it, or turn this off, there, should, this should have went off, see it's still on, so I don't know what's up with that, the, there's something up with the logic on that, so anyway, so we'll turn it back on, let's leave that to dim, be done with it, so we're good to go there, so we're happy there, let's go ahead and pop this up right here, let's go ahead and put in our flight plan, and our flight plan, I'm going to cheat here ladies and gentlemen, because every now and then you have to do what you got to do. I've already pre-done the flight and to save time and aggravation. We're going to scroll down here to KWJF to KHND and we're going to hit load and make sure the flight is okay. Everything looks good. Yeah, everything looks fine. Only thing I need to probably need to do so is go over here like this, scroll down. Oops, don't do that. Wrong one. Scroll down. There's K, H, and D. Well, we don't know what our, uh, we don't know what, which runway, if we're going to be 12 or 30 over there. So I'm just going to leave that alone for right now, I guess. So that's fine. 
We'll go back to here, message, we're inside airspace, and they want me to turn to 90. We'll go ahead and do that now. On my SciTech stuff. I mix my SciTech stuff with uh, my flights because it's I paid for it. I might, as well, I might as well use it, right? So now we're set at 90. And there is... Well, actually, we're not, are we? I set this at 90. I really should have set my heading at 90. Oopsie. Let's get our heading at 90. There are headings at 90. And we really don't need uh, that. I mean, we can just go ahead and put in the... Uh, we can put in... Uh, 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 Palmdale um, VOR just because and we can adjust let's see I go back this way Palmdale VOR is right there alright that takes care of that and also tells us how far we are away from Palmdale VOR which is 9 miles we're good to go there alright and first off, the way this autopilot works too, is you, we are going to eventually go to nav mode. So that's what that is. Use your scroll wheel. First we're going to take off with heading hold, but we're, but we're going to end up with nav. Uh, right here, we need to turn this to standby. Oh, by the way, as of this recording of this video, um, this airplane works with 11.01. I tried to last night before I went to bed recording this video because it is early in the morning um, here at local time I tried to use uh, uh, the new update which is uh, 11.02 B2 and um, you know with the beta and uh, it with the B2 and it didn't work it, it this the sasso keeps on crashing every time you go up here to hit to modify your uh, settings window it crashes the desktop so set the report to laminar like you normally were supposed to do and all that sort of thing but you know we'll have to wait and see but anyway so enough talk let's get some action so what we're going to do is we got our flight plan set and ready to go uh, the only thing we probably need to do is hit activate ether just to know we're serious and we will switch that to gps and they want us at 89 so just to review that Oop, you need to make this so this flight plan. There we go. I want the little window there. I like the fact that the GPS or that the 530 shows uh, airspaces. Uh, that, that's cool. I, I like that. I wish uh, um, you know, like a Skyview and the, the uh, Carinado ones, they show airspaces and they don't show airspaces. But anyway, it is what it is. So, let's rock and roll. Let's go ahead and put our everything up. Don't know if this is the right way to do it because I don't read instructions. How I know, like I've said before in other videos, how I know it's a good airplane is if I can get into this airplane and I can just fly right away. If I can just get in this airplane and take off right away with no issues, then I know we got a good airplane. In other words, have the simplicity, but then also have the complexity that you want later on down the road that you turn basically things to make things more. Uh, you know more more challenging so I really like the fact that this airplane is really easy to fly so when we got everything up there like I said because this is an old-school uh, uh, gas engine we've got all our propellers and everything up I'm gonna crack it back to probably about 75 percent or so of the uh, I'm not gonna foul the plugs uh, we're we'll going to turn the lights on I don't need that light on. That light's not necessary. Alright, but what is necessary is we'll turn on the fuel boost. And we'll throw a P the those beacons. I don't know what the so those are in op. I don't know what they intended those for. What we need to do is we need to uh, get on the battery. You hear, hear the difference in sound? See there's the uh, uh, GPU. Quieter. Which is kind of interesting. This is open, so we're good to go there. Cabin lights on for our guests that we haven't loaded up yet. That's actually kind of bright. Never mind. Screw that. <laughs> Besides, we're burning. We're burning a battery anyway. All right. So, we're, so let's. And 
let it warm up a little bit. Simple enough. And let's go ahead and turn on a generator, get some power. And is our generator on? Are we producing power? Yes, we are. Not much, but a little bit. All right, turn the boost on. Looks good. On. The other generator on. Hit the strobes later. Boost on. Usually this is at 28 for some reason. I don't know what's up with that. But if I do turn that on... Do the... Uh, go down on power. <laughs> oh well, anyway. So, avionics on. Everything is on. Everything looks good. Go ahead and turn out the boost, and we get a little low on pressure. Just a little. Make sure that our nose trim is working, and it is. We've got to put it. We got to set the nose trim. Well, you guys don't see it, but I need to set the nose trim right around three, two and a half, three. Probably three. And we're fine there. Let's take a look over here. Okay, we're really, really rich right now. How do we know we're really rich? Look how look where these needles are. I'll bring it back down. Get it in. Whoop. I won't get out too far. So it's got to be a little. It's got to be a little bit of rich right now. All right. So that's fine enough. Now off camera. I need to set some other things up. Take a look on the outside there. Good. Load some passengers. And these also pop up too. You just click right here and just pop it up. Which is kind of nice. I like these gauges. Let's go. Let's go. Turn on some. Them. You just click on them to turn it back off. Which is cool. Good, good, good. And we'll throw some music on. And make sure the music is very quiet because then because it gets very annoying very quickly. And we'll knock it down to about six percent. You can hear it right there a little bit. Alright. So I think we're good to go here. Hopefully I'm over the uh, sound of the engines here. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Alright. Cool. Release the parking brake. Throw some light. We don't have any taxi lights on this airplane, so we'll just uh, use we'll use our landing lights. I think we're going down runway six is what it said earlier. General WMJ Fox yep. here. Six two nine eight eight. So. So we'll go ahead and get ready for that.
to, like I said, the inconvenience of having that window right there. But that's just the way the airplane was built. Nice and smooth, no problems. Seems to be now granted I don't have any clouds in the sky right now, so that makes that makes a big difference. But uh I think this airplane is fairly easy on the frames. Considering it's four K textures. down back down in the center lane here We're about two and a half or so gallons per hour surprisingly this airplane is very efficient when it comes to fuel I was like wow this thing doesn't you know my turbo props consume more fuel than this thing does The interior is very, very nice. They did a good job on the interior. Like I said, the airplane's a good airplane. I do. I recommend buying it. Sure, you know, if you want to fly a uh, twin-engine, you know, gas airplane, old-school gas airplane, then which is what I wanted. That was my intention. Is I wanted an old-school airplane. Um, have at it. I totally recommend it. Back in my uh, FSX days. Um, the, for the the airplane I had for, I really liked for a long time was the twin engine uh, uh, Aero Commander uh, 680, and then the 690. Uh, uh, the turbo came for FSX back then, back in the day. I forgot the guy's name who made it, but he really did a good job for for the FSX time timeline. And uh, I, fl I flew the crap out of that airplane. It was nice and slow, like this one, not very fast. But boy, I tell you what, it's it was fun to fly. And this is the Carinado uh, H HD version of the uh, Striker S. Or 500. Striker 500, Striker S. 500, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so, we're coming up to uh, where we need to be. I didn't turn on, I didn't install X Life. I forgot to sell X because X Life I had a crash. But uh, all right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and throw our strobes on. We're going to turn our fuels back on. Uh, is our temperature high? It's getting up there high. Uh, it was one one quirk about this uh, is that you guys don't see it, but well, first off, you got the cowling flaps; um, they have to be open, and when you hit the buttons, they don't work. So, and I don't know if they work because um, because I have my SciTech equipment. It, it might be the reason why these don't work. Probably with if you own this air crane, these right here might work, but. Um, the cowling flaps don't work because if you go out here you see that they're not turned on and because you can see these are down right now um, well of course it's not capturing my uh, there, let me zoom in this way not capturing my uh, my mouse but anyway these little things right next to the pipe right there they're not open and I found that when I use my SciTech stuff then I can open them up as you can see that they're going up right now and then when I do that when I open up those cowling flaps now this temperature my oil temperature will start to go down so you know it is what it is and also head pressure will go down if I left those closed 
Um, oh yeah, I'd be in trouble. I it, it just gets way too hot, real way too hot, really really fast. All right, so we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and give let's rich us up a little bit. And let's get up here and get going. Nobody coming, nobody coming. If they are, get out of my way. One deal of flaps. And... Full power. Captain, I'm giving her a shell she's got. Should start takeoff. TCAS alert. alert. Positive climb, gear up, still climbing. I'm hand flying it right now. This is a real, real. You know, real nice, easy plane to hand fly. Which is great. It's very satisfying. I'm just going to start pointing towards, uh, actually, right there. I went too far. I st now I'm going to dip a little bit because of the... I get my speed up. up a little bit and then I'm going to uh, turn the uh, roll on okay it's on the uh, navigant autopilot's working it's going and like I said, because this is an old school airplane, I, I don't hit alto, altitude hold until once I get to where I want to be. Which in this case, I'm going to go 12,500. Um, we're not using VOR, we're using a GPS right now. I've got it set to the navigation to GPS. So it should be following the, uh, the GPS right now. If I did it right. We're still at 93. So. Now, I got to learn. I'm still learning the aircraft. I'm still learning what the sweet spot is and where to run your props and everything. Right now, the props are wide open. I just keep them out of the red. I'll knock it down to... It seems at right around 2,400 RPM, but I don't know. It might be uh, better. I, I got to figure it out. Again, I have not read any instructions. I just get in it and fly. As you can hear me pulling the sound, I'm pulling back on the throttle. Or the, I'm sorry, the props. See my actual, I pulled down 2400 RPM and I'm actually seeing my speed decreasing. I don't know what kind of prop these are. But we'll, we'll I guess we'll just settle down at 2500 RPM for now. That way I won't be losing speed until I get up in the air and then I'll pull them back. And we're climbing at uh, 1250 feet per minute, which is exactly what you're supposed to be. And it doesn't have an automatic, uh, you can see right there where it says fast. I'm having to adjust the, the props. 
and just try to keep them uh, try to keep them the same as much as possible which is cool it adds that layer of uh, challenge more workload Another cool little thing I found is right here. Pull back on the, uh, you get the, that exhaust gas temperatures. You'll see where that star is. I found by putting it right where the star is and try to maintain those needles in that star. And you'll see right over here that uh, that's right around 1500 degrees. And uh, at 1500 degrees, I see that I'm my voice is a little loud there. I just realized that. I turn that down a little bit uh, so I'm not so loud sorry about that anyway about 1500 degrees or so that seems to be a good uh, good sweet spot as I climb now so you see my fuel you'll see my fuel uh, go down like right now we're really we're burning uh, we got endurance. We got one hour and 24 minutes of fuel at current. Uh, so, we'll leave it on endurance for right now. Just doing a steady climb at 108 knots. Nice and slow. Following the GPS, we can go ahead, and go ahead and kick the lights off. Don't need the lights anymore, and we don't need the. Uh, so that's probably going to modify this a little bit. I turned off the uh, the boost. And you can see the temperatures. Let me go outside, make sure that these are on, and they are on. They're open. Flaps are open. Nice, nice airplane. Really, really like it. So they're talking to my just leaving a message in my discord but anyway so yeah it's I like it I like it a lot I am I'm, I'm more busy like right now I'm having to uh, get my uh, mixture back into the little star again and I forgot to uh, Turn off the music when I was uh, landing, but oh well. You're supposed to do that when you're taking off. So that'll count against me. But I'm what, what makes this... I mean, I'm getting the best of both worlds, in my opinion, with this airplane. I'm getting the ability to still have a GPS and fly the, fly the route, and then at the same time, kicking it old school with the uh, you know fact that you got you got to stay on top of the airplane, which is good. You get complacent when all these airplanes and everything is done automatically for you. You kind of you get you get lazy, I guess you could say, about the best way to describe it. Or at least I get lazy. Uh, I'll speak for myself. <laughs> I 
But like I said, the, all the lights work. You turn those on. Uh, it lights up really nice at night. No problem.
Southern California Logistics Information Romeo. 1300 Zulu weather. Wind 150 at 8, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 17, 2.2. Altimeter 2990. Arriving runways 17, 21. Departing runways 17, 21. Advi
Oh, wonderful. I had been sitting here trying to talk to you guys, and I just noticed that my uh, uh, microphone was turned off. Well, anyway, sorry about that. I've been saying a lot of stuff here, and you guys haven't been hearing. That's, that's real disappointing. But anyway, I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Get rid of that sign. Get rid of the I'm back. Yeah. Gone for lunch. Everything is in the green. Everything looks good. Temperature or time says 
should be 7.30, and it's not. It says 6.30. That means I gotta go over here, and to here, and I gotta put a plus 60 offset. There. Now it's correct. Okay. I've been fighting with X-Plane 11. I, I do a lot of uh, trashing of the uh, preferences. You go into the preference folder, and uh, you could tr you could trash it. And uh, I found that I get better frame rates and everything, especially after you do an, an update, like a, with X Plane does an update or whatever. Then you trash the preferences and you let it rebuild the new preferences. When, when you do that, then I, for me and my my my. Uh, X-Plane install and computer system, it seems to work out really well. Still hovering right around 13.1, so gallons per hour, so 26 gallons per hour. I'm not really complaining there. And I'm seeing people pop in and out, so I definitely appreciate you guys watching. I know this is the boring part, just going from one place to another. I thought I'd do the live stream because I haven't done a live stream in a while and just kind of just have fun. Like I say, this uh, Strike Commander is a nice aircraft. I like the 690, to be honest with you. I like the, the Aero Commander 690. Nobody's ever made an Aero Commander 1000. That's one that I think they should... Uh, they should make somebody it needs to make an X-plane uh, 6,000 because that's uh, or a uh, actually they actually made a jet version of this airplane, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, I never saw it, or I've seen it on in pictures and stuff, but never nobody ever make one. But that'd be kind of cool. But the Strike Commander uh, 500S is, is not a bad airplane. Not quite as fast because the uh, especially the the 690 turboprop you could do like. 220 knots or 210 knots or something indicated whereas this airplane right here I, I'm pushing I'm pushing what right now I'm pushing a hundred just almost to, to 150 right now and I do have a 10 knot tailwind which you guys can't see I have another program on my mom's laptop that tells me uh, you know my indicated airspeed true airspeed and all that sort of thing but uh, but yeah, I, I, that's that's fine. I, this is low and slow, and, and I'm cool with that. Totally cool with that. Just making sure that everything is good. Ten, or we haven't uh, don't have any kind of a failure with we're burning 28 uh, amps. So we're looking fine. Boy, we got four people in the house now. Smuggler's dream. <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> yes, they are. Bronze, how you doing, my friend? Yeah, the uh, if I recall, you're absolutely right. I think back in the day uh, that they would use this aircraft to smuggle ice cream across the border, right? <laughs> Everybody's got to have that Neapolitan ice cream, so we got to smuggle that Neapolitan ice cream from the from the border into the states. <laughs> and cherries, got to have cherries. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this the Strike Commander is really a nice airplane. I really. Uh, I really like it. Uh, like I said, I've been flying the jets and I've been flying the turboprops and I just wanted something that was kicking it old school and that's why I went ahead and went with the Strike Commander. Uh, there was another manufacturer, another uh, X-Plane developer that has his own Strike Commander and actually presentations what sold me on the Carinato version as opposed to the other one. Uh, maybe the other one's better, but as far as presentation is me as a consumer looking at the videos and stuff, um, 
I really thought, um, you know, I really thought that the uh, that the commander, the uh, Coronado one, was better. Yeah, the uh, FSX. Um, you know, of course, this is X plane, and uh, X plane still trying to catch up. You know, with FSX. But, uh, you know, it's slowly getting there. And, of course, you probably hear my animals in the background here making all kinds of noise. But, like, I got so used to automatic, uh, you know, with the automatic, uh, uh, you know, mixture control and everything else... You get lazy, and then you start going back to an airplane like this, and it's just kind of like, oh crap! You gotta, you gotta adjust the mixture. Oh, you gotta adjust the props. Uh, Franz, because if you're still with us, um, what's your uh, when you're running this airplane? What was the uh, prop setting? Um, I'm again, I, like I said in the start of the video, I um, I, I tell a, a quality of an airplane other than the, the, the visual it looks and everything is by just getting in it and fly you know not mess around uh, just getting it and fly and so basically my question to you is what have you been running your prop setting at uh, right now I'm doing a 2400 RPM I've been trying to find the internet you know we're kind of like what's the uh, sweet spot for the props the uh, you know the uh, altitude that kind of thing uh, be nice to have a POH but I haven't been able to find a POH uh, for the uh, strike commander yet. I'm sure there's one out there. I just haven't found it yet to see what the sweet spot is. Uh, right now, they Carinado did disable the uh, hypoxia because we're at 15,000 feet, 500, and I should be, uh, you know, I should be passed out right now. So I guess they're l making that leap of faith that uh, by disabling the hypoxia that you're you you got. Uh, you got oxygen. But I am curious to what the uh, what the nice sweet spot is for running the props. Yeah, the beaver, I have the beaver 3. Um, the, the, who is it? The beaver, not, not the RW Designs, it's the uh, uh, STMA. Uh, I forgot what they call themselves. But uh, I've been running that. Yeah, see, right now, my throttle, I'm at 100% on my throttle. I am about, I would say, 80% on the props. And I'm about six, I'm about 65%, maybe a little over 50, according to my props, with the, uh, with the mixtures. So if I turn it down, we'll go ahead and make this turn here. And I am doing 150 knots. So what I'm going to do is, once I get settled here... I'm going I'm to I'm leave the props right around 70, which is about 2,200 RPM, I guess. So let's turn down the props to 2,200 RPM. Make the adjustments. Okay, there's the, there's roughly 70%, I guess. And the pro and the uh, sixty-five percent on the uh, um, I'll pull that back. There's about sixty-five percent. Okay, by me pulling it back right now, I still got a ten-knot tailwind right now. Um, I'm still adjusting the. Uh, props a little bit there. And we're... Alright, so now we are at the percentage. At least with this flight right now, I'm still losing power. I'm down to 129... 
I'm definitely not running the engines quite as hard, for sure. But I am getting a hell of a fuel economy right now with those settings. I'm only getting six, uh, you know, 12 gallons per hour on, uh, you know, six gallons on each tank right now. So I'm definitely conserving on the fuel, no doubt about that. See, with this aircraft, uh, they put in, they just put this little star thing in right here. So what I've been doing is I've just been following the star. You know, keep everything inside that star on that exhaust temperatures, which ends up being like right around 1,500 or so degrees, 1,600. That's what I've been using as my guide. And you can see that we're kind of hanging out with our props about the same. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, we're slowly losing, uh, going down, we're now, to, we're down to, now down to 115 knots. I'll probably push it a little harder than that. I don't know it's because maybe it's because of my altitude, because I'm at 15,000 feet. Uh, are those settings, Franz? What was your uh, altitude? Because I got a 10 knot tailwind at the moment. I'm doing uh, 100 and at the moment I'm doing 144 true. Ah, uh, that's why. So probably because I'm such high altitude, that's why. Um, well, I could go down to 12.5. Let's take it down to 12.5. I mean, I don't. I don't have to be this high. Doesn't really matter. I'm using my SciTech uh, multifunction panel to to adjust my uh, altitude. Now just let it descend. Doing 700 feet per minute. Because like I said, I'm learning the aircraft. We'll take it to 11.5 at the moment. Once it set, let it settle down 11. 11.5. 11 And we'll look at the pretty orthos. Yeah, Fork Boy over at uh, the org uh, forums was, um, you know, released a bunch of uh, uh, all of Arizona, all of uh, California, and Washington, part, parts of Washington and Oregon. And I downloaded them, downloaded them and then he stopped the project. Uh, at least I haven't seen it resurface yet, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, these orthos first, you know, and I live here in Southern California, so, um, you know, I'm just right, right at home with me, and they're, they are really, really nice. I, I was not a true believer of uh, orthos at all. I just kind of like, yeah, poo-pooed them off, like, oh, I'm just flying over a picture, but uh, these orthos from uh, Fork Boy, I think it was, I forgot, Fork Boy something, I forgot what it was, but anyway, um, really like, wow, this is, this is really huge compared to stock uh, X-Plane. Like right now, we're coming up to three uh, solar plants. Which in the Southern California Mojave Desert, there's there's uh, solar plants all over the place now. And at the time of this uh, image, you can see that uh, can't tell if they were done or they were still building them or what.
but where I live up here in the uh, up in the high desert and where are we at anyway I need to look at somebody oh okay actually we're coming up to uh, Prim Nevada right now so that's where the casinos are state line we used to call Prim Nevada state line and uh, that's a little resort area down here, which is which is real, um, which I need to go back to. Right here, uh, this resort's legit, um, and then a state line right there, right below the aircraft, as on this image, which used to be now called Prim Nevada, but at the time it was state line. So I need to lose a little bit of altitude anyway. But like I said, getting getting Fork Boys uh, um, Orthos really opened things up. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure being with you. You have yourself a great one to land this airplane, and then of course I got to do things too. So you take care, sir. Thanks. Thanks for chatting. Appreciate that. And if you feel it's worthy, just uh, like and subscribe, all that happy stuff. If you feel I'm worth your time, I always appreciate it. So we are flying over state line between California and Nevada. That's what you see right below you. Prim Nevada, I guess they call it now. It used to be state line, now it's called Prim Nevada. 15 freeway. But like I said, these orthos are pretty sweet. I really, really like them. Did a good job. I've not been able to figure out how to get rid of this table, though. I like the shine, the shine effects off that. that that's pretty good. That, that's X Plane 11 right there. With X Plane 10, you wouldn't have that variation, subtle variation like that at all. So X Plane 11 did do a good job on that. Another uh, solar solar thing. But like I said. You get one shot to turn this on, and then after you turn the uh, uh, open the table up, you can't fold it back. So I'll have to make a uh, Carinado have to work on that. And we're at eleven thousand, and now we're slowly winding down because I need to uh, lose a lot of altitude here. We are 19 miles away, so I'm going to get a little bit aggressive on my descent. Going into, uh, for those of you who came in late, um, going to Henderson, Nevada. Doing a nice little uh, flight. Go to Vegas. We'll slow down to... Uh, Accelerate on down to right around. Let's see. I gotta clear those mountains, so I probably don't want to go more than 7,000 feet. And I need to call the ATIS up. So we'll go. Let's go 6,500. There we go. We'll make this up as we go along. And because of that, I need to be a little aggressive on my descent. So we'll do. We'll do 1,200. 
1,200 feet per minute. And I need to adjust my... Uh, take it at 2300 RPM on the props. Don't know if that's right or not, but like I said, I'll... And we'll pull back on the throttle a little bit. We're going a little fast. This is a nice, nice airplane. This, uh... Strike Commander. I like it. I like it a lot. It took me six hours to paint this. Just, just what you see right here. I'm still not feeling it on the uh, on my red nose reindeer thing, though. Don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. Looks kind of different. I'll probably be too lazy. I'll probably just leave it. Because I do have to have a balance of red. Because the company colors, Solus Wings, is uh, red, white, and blue, of course. So, I don't know. I got... Still not feeling it completely on the, uh, on the red-nosed reindeer thing. One thing I do like about this airplane is you're constantly changing your your settings. It keeps you on your toes, whereas you just get lazy when you have a turbo prop and stuff where everything is set for you and you just kind of just go do its business, let it do its thing. Watch a few buttons in the computer. Not this one. And there's the 15 freeway, and there's the turn if you would take off and go to Henderson this way. Well, actually, I don't have my, uh, I'm going to turn on my, uh, mouse capture. Getting tired of, uh, there we go, we got a mouse now. Anyway, 15 freeway, and you make your turn and go to Henderson, and you go off that direction. But the, uh, the Garmin 530 does work. No problem at all. So, which reminds me, I need to, because uh, we're so close, get my button gear here and find out uh, which runway we're going to land on. And to do that, I need to get the ATIS. I need to get the ATIS for Anderson, Nevada. And the ATIS for Henderson Executive is 120.777. So 120. I will adjust that. Uh, 777. And. Alright. So it takes care of that. And uh, hit that. Henderson Executive Information Sierra. 17, of course. Weather. Wind 160 at 9. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Alright. Well, we're going to hand fly it. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 2981. Arriving runways 17 right, 17 left. Departing runways 17 right, 17 left. Advise on initial contact you have Sierra. We see it right there. Executive Information Sierra. 1300 Zulu weather. Wind 160 at 9. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 24. Dew point minus 1. Altimeter 2981. Arriving runways 17 right. 17 left. Departing runways 17 right. 17 left. 
advise him. All right. Good enough. Oh, well, there's where I gotta land, but I'm way too high. But we'll get down there. I'm doing four gallons per hour right now. <laughs> Leave it right there then. That yeah, was not good. I'm gonna go over here to the 215. We'll swing around here at the 215, which is what that is. Nice and slow. And I better put my uh, seatbelt on for my passengers. I don't need the aggravation of them hurting. So I could go that way and buzz around uh, Las Vegas, but I really need to go to go do things. I got got some real world stuff I got to do. So I'm going to expedite this video. All right, let's get this thing on the ground. Lights on, everybody's happy. Slow ourselves down a little bit there. They'll continue to, to descend like crazy. I do a little bit of correction there. I'm actually putting a lot of force to get down at the moment. I'd be wishing I wouldn't have done that, probably. Let's see how bad I foobar this landing. Ooh, a little bit goes to wind right there. Something. Of course, it's always operator error. I do gonna crab it in or something. There you go. 
No reversers. <laughs> Transponder set to standby. That wasn't the, my greatest in the world, but hey, it worked. Got on the ground and didn't piss off too many people. It was a minus 89 feet. So, eh, minus 89 feet per minute. That's not too bad. I'll take it. I'll have to watch that again. That's where my debriefing will come into play. I don't know why they got this big old airplane sitting there in the middle of the taxiway. Oh, now it moves. I get close and all of a sudden it decides to move. Alright, fine, whatever. That's too funny. The reason why I say it's too funny is because every time I'm I'm wrapping up a flight towards an end of a flight, then all of a sudden I get views. <laughs> now I'm up to four people watching, which is cool. I appreciate every one of you guys watching. But still, it's just kind of funny that uh, when I'm about ready to wrap up a flight and go over and shut it down and all that happy stuff that I get the views. <laughs> That's okay. No, I don't care. I just do this for fun anyway. I guess I can turn off my strobes. They'd probably appreciate that. Let's go find a place to park. Let's see. Let's just park right over here. That way we're close to the fuel. See? Now I got five people watching. I'm supposed to be in the air. Alright, well, it's close enough. Let's just spin around and find a spot. I can't really tell if there's an airplane there or not, so I'll just go like this. Okay, I guess I'll create my own spot right here. Good enough. Awesome. Mission accomplished. Get my, uh... All my flaps up. All right, shut this bad boy down. Lights off. And what else do I need to do? Need to do, need to do. Um, we're looking pretty good. I don't see the reason why I can't just pull the pull everything back. That's it. And well, I can't reach the back door, so. Let's have to go over here and hit passenger door, static elements and that. That takes care of that. And then uh, unlock that, get rid of the passengers. Passengers are going away. Turn off everything here. And then... I hope you enjoyed the flight. I hope you enjoyed the flight. Okay. Off the battery. Well, that's done but now what I want to see is I want to see let's go back to replay just a little bit and uh, I want to see the landing and let's go back 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 okay there that's good enough and then we want to go to tower 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 okay, no not chase plane let's go tower Let's go to tower. There we go. And uh, I should be over here. My airplane should be over here somewhere. That's not too far back. Oh, there's my plane. It's way over there. That's why I was... All right. There's my area plane. Oh, it's because I left the... Was I when I exit the airplane? Oops. <laughs> okay, let's pause this, because that doesn't look very good at all. <laughs> um, let's close the door. There we go. <laughs> and I guess, because I have... Uh, well, all the lights should be on, so I don't know why, I don't know why that was. But anyway, back to tower. <laughs> 
I forgot with X plane if you uh, if you turn off all the stuff and stuff, then it turns everything off. Okay, there's real time. All right, we fixed that problem. Yeah, see, look at that. I'm really losing altitude in a hurry. Banging the sticks. And I was crabbing in a little bit. <laughs> Can't have me falling out. <laughs> very, very, very true. Still got the door open anyway? Yeah, I still got the door open anyway. Eh, that wasn't too bad of a landing. Not bad at all. With my door open. Oh, that was, those are the people's doors. Oh, crap. I forgot to turn those off. Oh, well. <laughs> What's done is done. Very nice. Very, very nice. Nice, nice airplane. Well, I successfully got to Henderson, California, or Henderson, Nevada, not California, Nevada. So I guess I need to shut this down and then uh, go do something productive with my life. Oh, I, but my wife did say I need to wash clothes. So that gives, if I have to wash clothes, that gives me more time to have to fly, which is actually not a bad thing. <laughs> okay, well, oh well. Off, off to the Discord. So I will catch you all later. I appreciate you guys watching this flight. And I will catch you guys next time uh, on X-Plane Adventures. And figure out where I'll go and what I'll do next in my uh, travels. But yes, the uh, Strike Commander, uh, all in all, the Strike Commander, if you want to go with the, in a, a, a gas airplane, is definitely uh, a definite great, good one to have. No doubt about it. I really, really like it. I, and I recommend it. Um, it's Carinado product, which means you know you ha everybody has their feelings about Carinado, and that's fine. You know, but all in all, the airplane itself is is is, is good. So cannot complain with the with the aircraft at all. Anyway, guys, take care, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.